So in 2016, in that proposal, one of the biggest parts of it was how do we make more space for God and how do we decrease and, he, how, and how does he increase? And so we, um, from that point forward, we just started to make more space for God. How do we do that? Worship a, little, a bit longer. Instead of just singing one song and having a break, we sang two songs in a row, three songs in a row. We waited on God more. We allowed people to pray out. We just made space for the Holy Spirit. When I was talking about the kind of the chaos and the mess of church here, in a good way, it's because there is that freedom and to, to be able to, for the spirit to move, that you can, you can feel that, the, the presence of the spirit and the fact that, you know, the leaders are, are open to that happening and to come and pray with you for that happening, it kind of facilitates that. Whereas in something that's more structured and more restrained, um, you, you don't necessarily get the space to do that. It took some getting used to, yeah, because it's always been the whole, my whole life a structure. So to not have that structure was really mind blowing, really, to let the Holy Spirit sort of move like it, we allow it to here, because I've never, never had that before. So it was, it was a real, a real sort of shock for me to be able to come in and do that and, and participate in, in worship like that. It was about teaching the worship team to say, right, don't listen to everyone telling you that you're not singing their favorite hymn or your, their favorite worship song and, and feeling discouraged or feeling like you've got to pander to what people want. Seek God, have a relationship with Jesus, seek God and find out what, what worship he wants you to bring to this gathering. It was hard with worship because you had to let go of all your well, I guess it's like your control, isn't it, of your plan of what you feel is going to happen and just let God take over. But I absolutely prefer that now than, than having a plan. Incredible to see what God can do with people, uh, especially when they just submit to what he wants to do. God, at times, will just he just takes over the meeting. He just takes over the worship. He takes over what's happening together as corporately. And I think what I love is when I hear the congregation singing and you know their heart is reaching out for God, whether it's praise, gratitude, whether it's calling out to him because they need him or it's because they're just so in awe of his love or what they've done in their lives. Um, and I think the worship team, anybody that's preaching, Rich specifically, anyone who gets up on stage, I think they understand that responsibility. Um, and as with anything, there's a top-down effect. So if the people up there, whether it's worship, preaching are doing it, and they're backed up by a team of people pastorally, and uh, you know, all the people that are doing a great job in, of running this church, have that same attitude, it trickles down. Um, God's showing me every day that he wants to perfect me as the days go on, as the months go on, as the years go on, that he's for me. And everybody up here is the same, that we're all on a journey. And if we submit to him, and how he wants things, not how we, we want it, but if we submit to him and how he wants things, he's right there in the midst of us, right there with us, working that through with us. Well, I'm not used to this way of doing church, or I wasn't used to this way of doing church, but when I came in, and that's what actually kept me, because um, I've always thought, why, why are people trying to arrange what the Holy Spirit does? So we can't, we can't like move the Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit that moves through us. We need to make sure that God continues to build his house. If you're new here today and you think it's a bit chaotic, I'm sorry, but it is because it's just happened to us. And we don't really know what to do yet. We're like all these kids and, and we, we've got to think about plans and ideas of what to do it. But we thank God that we've got that problem. Thank God that we've got that problem. But we, so if you're coming in and it looks a bit chaotic, I'm sorry, it is. But we're, we're doing it as we go because we're trying to let God build the house. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labour in vain who build it. Yeah, so I've just been asked a question that's actually really moved me. And it's, it's, uh, it's um, you know, really, how, how has the move of the Holy Spirit impacted me in terms of have I, have I wanted that before or have I experienced it much before? Um, God knows how much I've, I've known how important the move of the Holy Spirit is. 
but he knows, and I know how powerful it is when God moves, but I, in theory, for the wider church, for a church, but I had not experienced it before. So it was massive when at the beginning of, um, it, in early 2022, last year, um, the church here, in Hillfield's church, came to its knees in submission to God, in response to 2 Chronicles 7.14, um, the passage which talks about if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and submit and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and I will restore them and I will hear their land that led into something that we didn't even realize was going to happen but we cleared the programs of what we do in the evenings during the week the bible studies um, the prayer meetings the youth groups it was all stopped and we just made space for God we realized that God could move. And so we decided every single night we would just stop and seek his face. And on the third night, the Holy Spirit came. Yeah, so I was the first person to go down during revival nights and, and I'd never gone down in the Spirit before. I'd seen it, I'd seen it happen. You know, it, it, I'd been in meetings before where it happened, but I never felt that 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 would happen to me. Yeah, I think it was Rich and Jamie just came over to pray with me. Like they were gonna go around the room like praying with everybody. And I just thought they were just gonna lay hands and pray, pray with me. And as soon, I, d I don't even think they had touched me for very long. You know, I think Rich held my hands and Jamie was behind me and before I knew it, <laughs> I was just flat out on the floor. On the second night, I actually was saved. And then the third night, I think it was, I was I received the Holy Spirit, uh, which was absolutely awesome. Um, and then, uh, and that Sunday, I was baptized. So, um, so that just sort of shows, like, outwardly, how uh, how it looks as though that something really major has shifted in my mind. And we didn't know it was going to be seven weeks. We just carried on, and we met for 32 weekdays, weeknights, and we still met on the Sundays. So Saturdays was the only days we didn't get. There was the odd day amongst those weeks where we didn't meet, but God did something different by his Holy Spirit every single night. So he can take your ashes, he can take your filth, he can take the sins, he can take your failures, he can take your mistakes, and he can make something beautiful out of it. So you don't need to come with God with all your righteousness, because you don't have it. You don't need to come to God with all your achievements, because you don't have it. You don't need to come to God when you feel like you're ready because you never will be. You come to God right now, even if it's mess, even if it's filth, even if it's hardly anything that you've got, if you come to him right now, he will take it and he'll turn it into something beautiful. We've decided as a church that we will not compromise on the truth of the word of God. And I think that that is success. Mm. That is success, that we can stay obedient to that, sticking to the word, yeah. moving by the spirit. And God will send the people in. Yeah. And that's what's happening. So without God, none of this happens. We are so quick to tell God what to do. But if we start to learn through our personal walk with Jesus, that he has the answers, he knows the way, and he knows the best way to reach people and change lives. And we make room for him to lead. Then we will see the most amazing miracles. We will see salvations. We will see baptisms. And we will see people growing in their walk with Jesus. But it starts with getting out of the way and making space for the Holy Spirit to reign in your own life and in the body of the church.